Welcome to this tutorial where we will help you to get an overview of your survey results in Netagate. When you first log in to Netagate, you will arrive on the start page. From the start page, there are a couple of different ways that you can access your survey result. The first way is via the last edited tab here. In this tab, you can see the last five surveys that you have worked on. If you want to see the result for one of these surveys, you would simply locate the survey and then head on over to the result icon here. This will take you to the result for that survey. The other way to access your result from the start page is via all surveys here or here. Now clicking on either of these buttons will take you to the same place. Once you click on either of these buttons, you will arrive to an area where you can see all of the surveys that you have worked on. From here, you simply locate the survey you would like to take a look at and then head over to the result icon here and click. Now that you have entered your chosen report, let's take a look at what we have on the screen. In the top right, you have the option to change the survey language and the interface language. If your survey was distributed in multiple different languages, you have the option to toggle between those here. Interface language refers to the language used for the Netagate platform. To the far left of the screen, you have a menu where you can manage your reports. We take a look at this in a separate video. Coming to the main section of your report, you can see your company logo with the title of the report underneath it. Below that, you have the options to create a new report based on the current report. Next, if you have made any changes to the report you are in, you can click Save As to save it as a new report. Reset allows you to reset the report if you have made any changes and don't wish to keep them. Share allows you to share the report with others. And Export allows you to export the report to a number of different formats. Here, you have the option to sort your responses by time. So if you click on the drop down button here, you can choose a number of different time periods or you can input your own custom time range here. Below that, you have a survey information dashboard, giving you an overview of some information about your survey. Using the little cog icon here, you can access the settings for this section. Here, you can choose what kind of survey information you would like to be displayed, and you can change this to suit your needs. Underneath the survey information dashboard, you'll see a faint line with a plus in the center of it. If you hover over this line, it comes to life and gives you the option to add a dash or add a dashboard. If you click the plus, you're given a number of options for new dashes that you can add to your survey. So for example, you can choose to add a new dashboard with one of the questions from your survey and the corresponding result. You can also choose to add various different metrics. So you could add a response timeline, another survey information dash, drop off analysis or custom indexes. Underneath the survey information dashboard, we start coming to the result for each question in your survey. Now the results are shown in the order that the questions are shown to the respondents in the actual survey. So let's take a look at how the result is shown for this first question. On the right, you can see that the result is shown in a table, giving you the number of responses to each question option alongside the percentage value as well. You can also see the total answers here. You can also see this information represented in the graph on the left when you hover over each item in the graph. So let's take a look at some of the options that you have in this section. In the top right hand corner of this section, you have an icon that's made up of three dots. If you click this, you are able to add various different elements to the result for this question. So you can add text, for example, where you might want to add some explanatory notes about this question for people who may be viewing the report or even for yourself. You have the option to add additional charts. So in a moment, we'll take a look at how you can change the way the results are presented. You can also add an additional table. You can also add a time breakdown. You can apply other breakdowns, which we take a look at in another video. 
and then you can choose to hide the question completely. When you do that, the question will be minimized and you'll see it here represented as a line. If you'd like to re-show your question after hiding it, you simply click this eye icon with the cross through it and it will reappear. You also have options within the different elements in the question result. So in the graph section here, the first icon we see, this allows you to move the elements of the question result around the box. The next option you have are a few options about how the data is shown, how the result is shown in the graph. So you can choose how the results are sorted. You can choose the units that the results are shown in and you can choose the interval that your results are shown in. Next, you can change the chart colors for your graph. You can also change the graph type. So for example, if you would like your information to be represented as a pie chart, you would click the pie chart icon here. And then you can choose multiple different graph types to suit your needs. Next, you have the option to make the graph take up the whole width of this window. So you would click it to expand and then you would click it to make it smaller again. When you do expand the graph, you can see that the table moves to the bottom of the graph instead. Next, you have the trash can icon, which allows you to delete the graph. So if you'd only like your information, the results to be displayed as a table, you'd simply click delete. And the same goes for the table as well. So scrolling down, I will go to our first weighted question in the survey. And we can see that here. Like before, you're presented with the results in a table. You have the number here and then you have what that represents as a percentage. But what you also can see in this table is the standard deviation for the question and then an average result as well before viewing your total number of answers. Scrolling down again, we have the weighted matrix question. How satisfied are you with company X regarding the following aspects? This matrix appears as a large chart with a large table underneath. You get the absolute numbers and percentages once again, as well as the average value and the standard deviation. We also get a total value for the entire matrix here at the bottom. Scrolling down, we then come to the MPS question and results for this survey. You can see that the result is fit into your detractors here, your passives here, and then your promoters here. And you can see that the data is also represented in a table as before, as well as showing you your MPS result here. Scrolling down further, we can then take a look at our very first open text answer and result for this survey. So you can see here the question was, what changes would company X have to make for you to give it a higher rating? And so each respondent was able to type a text response to this question. So what we can see here is a word cloud that represents some of the most commonly used words across all answers from all respondents. At the top here, you can click the answers button in order to view the actual full form text answers from the respondents. Below that, we have the word cloud. So if you hover over any of the words here, you're able to see the count. And this is how many times the word has been used across all answers from all respondents. So the word information here, for example, it's the largest word or one of the largest words in this word cloud. And that means that it's one of the words that has been used the most. Now, when we come towards the edges of the word cloud, we can see that the words get smaller, and this means that they have been used less frequently. Now, as well as hovering over the words, you can also click at them to get more actions. So again, you can see the count. You can then choose to include certain words by clicking here. You can choose to exclude the word information by clicking here. You can choose to hide this word from the report. And this is good if you think that a word isn't necessary or doesn't add value to the information that you're trying to convey. And then you can choose to view all the answers containing this word. Along the top, you also have the options that we have already seen in a few of the other questions. And then you also have some options here. 
So you can choose what font your word cloud appears in. You can choose the text layout for your word cloud. You can choose the shape of your word cloud. And you can choose here the minimum frequency. So what is the minimum frequency that a word needs to appear to appear in your word cloud? So at the moment we have one. So all words, any word that is used at least once will appear in the word cloud. However, you can change this to suit you. Here, you can change the font size for the words in your word cloud. You can choose also the word spacing, making it wider or narrower. You also have the option here to look at all hidden words from your word cloud. And that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.